Hello, and welcome to our channel, Space Journey. In today's video, we're going to see how the new and insane nuclear starship would work, and of course, whether it would be safe for humans and the environment. And also, we will see some other very interesting stuff linked with nuclear starship. So, if you are interested in that, stay with us until the end of this video. At the beginning, please support us with subscribing to our channel and liking this video so we can continue researching and making more interesting videos on the topic of space for you. But anyways, let's not waste a second and move on with the video. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla and the man behind many ambitious projects, is known for having very ambitious dreams. Some of Musk's dreams include converting automobiles, households, and as much of the industry as possible from fossil fuels to sustainable energy implementing a new form of high-speed city-to-city transportation via vacuum tube, relieving traffic congestion with a honeycomb of underground tunnels fitted with electric skates for cars and commuters, creating a mind-computer interface to enhance human health and brain power, and saving humanity from the future threat of an artificial intelligence that may one day run amok and decide to eliminate the human species. Taken together, Musk's dream, if fruitified, will connect the planet and the solar system in ways that will fundamentally change humanity's relationship with two of the most important facets of reality, distance and time. The most obvious one is Musk's dream of transplanting enough people on the planet in a short enough time to form a self-sustaining society. As Musk has indicated, achieving this aim will need moving millions of peoples over the immense gap between the two worlds in a very short amount of time. A single one-way voyage, however, might take up to nine months, depending on the planet's alignments. The Starship can only deliver a stream of Mars arrivals with 100 colonists getting off at a time. Faster transportation is required to reach the scale Musk envisions. Other practical considerations for the necessity for speed in the big goal to conquer Mars exist. Take, for example, radiation. This is a source of frustration for engineers working on crewed spacecraft for long journeys. When working in space, radiation is all around you. Even SpaceX recognizes this and aims to incorporate a radiation shield on passenger carrying Starship models. That's a great move, but the more time you spend out there, the more you're exposed to a high dosage of radiation and the health issues that come with it, all of which are significant and may derail any aspiration of exploring Mars. Radiation induced cancer is a real danger in such endeavors, or infertility which would be a major setback for any plans to increase the human population on Mars through reproduction. The easiest way out of this is to simply speed up the journey, which is unlikely given the chemistry of burning propellants. While Musk intends to settle humans on Mars permanently, NASA is going there to collect data. Even for unmanned missions, it's critical to collect data as soon as possible in order to justify the massive resources necessary. NASA is prepared to launch the Starship to even further locations such as Neptune if it makes it to Mars. The last time anything like this happened, it took the Voyager 2 spacecraft 12 years to reach there and just a few beautiful photos during a flyby. This is plenty of time for the country's administration to change hands and the missions to be cancelled. Astronomers would have acquired their photos and data quicker and even started follow-up missions if the Voyager 2 had been capable of traveling faster. There's also the issue of transporting adequate gasoline for extended journeys. To escape the Earth's gravitational pull, a massive amount of fuel is required. If this happens, the spaceship may run out of fuel and be unable to go. SpaceX is addressing this issue by establishing a network of space fueling stations to refuel the Starship. However, because it takes approximately half a dozen additional Starships to get a single one completely loaded for Mars, the procedure becomes more difficult and expensive. Space is a huge area with a lot of distance between things, so if you want to get somewhere, you'll have to move quickly. So, what can SpaceX do to accelerate the Starship? Actually, there are a few alternatives. Solar sails are one such example. Is it, however, any faster? Here's how solar sails work. When the wind pulls the sails forward, the boat moves forward. The wind is made up of air particles with enough momentum to move the ship's sails. The sun's light is made up of photons, which, despite their lack of mass, have motion. As a result, if SpaceX installs enough sails on the Starship, photons from the sun will drive the ship forward. 
This propulsion technique was employed by the Japanese Icarus spacecraft that flew past Venus. It's also used in the light sail 2 of the planetary civilization, which is now orbiting the Earth. But how fast will the Starship's solar sails be able to move it? The energy generated by connecting sails the size of football fields would be around 9.3 WM, which is quite low considering the large weight. The further the Starship travels away from the Sun, the fewer photons that are able to reach the sails. This translates to a slower rate of speed. The second option is nuclear propulsion. Shortly, nuclear thermal propulsion is technology that provides higher thrust and twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets. The system works by transferring heat from the reactor to a liquid propellant. That heat converts the liquid into a gas, which expands through a nozzle to provide thrust and propel a spacecraft. A spaceship could undoubtedly be fueled by the same nuclear power plant that produces electricity. Despite the terrible press it receives when nuclear accidents happen, NASA has been unwilling to investigate the nuclear options for its rockets. However, you should be aware that the Space Launch System rocket and the Artemis moon mission, both of which will use chemical propulsion, are both being developed by NASA. Furthermore, because many NASA decisions are politically motivated, the agency may be unwilling to implement such a program. A private company like SpaceX, on the other hand, is not restricted in this way. Musk has the option of using nuclear energy to power a spacecraft. The energy density of uranium as a fuel is extraordinarily high, more than 4 million times that of a conventional chemical rocket propellant, which differentiates nuclear power rockets. This means that significantly less uranium is required to generate the same amount of energy as hydrazine, making it easier to control what would happen in such a scenario in space. If Musk decides to explore nuclear energy, he has two alternatives. The first is nuclear thermal propulsion, which when utilized actively is both powerful and energy efficient. A small nuclear fission reactor, similar to those to power nuclear submarines, will be aboard the spacecraft. The reactor will heat a gas, such as hydrogen, which will be injected into the spaceship via a nozzle and utilized to push it forward. By more than a ratio of two, this thermal propulsion technique beats chemical propulsion alternatives. They may produce thrusts of up to 100,000 newtons. To put that into perspective, if you can generate that much force in your car, you can accelerate from zero to 60 miles an hour in less than a quarter of a second. According to NASA engineers, this means the spaceship will reach Mars in about 25% less time. The second option is nuclear electric propulsion. This idea is to use energy from a high-powered nuclear reactor to power a propulsion system like a hull thruster. Not only is this more appealing, but it is also somewhat more efficient than thermal propulsion. It also has the advantage of being able to power several electric thrusters at once. Electric propulsion is the greatest choice for very long voyages, such as to Mars or beyond. It does not require solar energy, is extremely efficient, and produces a significant amount of thrust. According to our estimates, this form of propulsion can get the spacecraft to Mars in around 70% less time. Is SpaceX working on anything similar? Musk has previously stated that nuclear alternatives to the Raptor engine's chemical propulsion technology may be preferable. That may mean a number of things, but we're keeping an eye on it. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. Don't forget to support us by subscribing and liking this video, and also, Tell us what you think about Musk's strategy. We are really curious to know. We will do our best to make more videos for you with fascinating and interesting happenings in our universe. But for now, that's it. See you next time.